And we're back with some more X4. And right now we are currently sitting in Vic space. Why are Vig space, Vigor space? So that we can take care of a few things on the side. First, let's start off with my stupidity as is traditional. Now over here is uh, our shipyard that we had made, our wharf. The one that we were going to make all our ships from. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of resources here it's now capable of storing, like scanning arrays and an advanced electronics, which before weren't there, and this was because of my own stupidity. See, early on in the game when I was making a factory, I wanted everything to be, you know, just coming from our factory and paying for itself. So I found this option under player options under global orders, and I found this thing called default preferred build method. I set it to closed loop. I thought closed loop meant you just use the stuff from inside your factories. No, no, it's not what it is. In fact, Terran should have probably given me a clue what was going on. Terran is Terran production, and that uses all the Terran buildings and all of their resources, which are special. Universal is the default, which is what I was working off, and Closed Loop. Well, Closed Loop was introduced with uh, one of the expansion packs. I think it was Tides of Avarice. It introduced this whole sector here. These people were cut off from all the rest of space, and they had to live on recycling and scrap and simplified recipes for making everything. So by adapting that, we did get some simplified recipes, it just meant it cost enormous amounts of the base components, like hull parts, electronics, stuff like that. They just huge amounts of those, which were what was messing up my recipes and messing up what I was planning on doing. However, we've switched back to universal production methods. Our shipyard now has all of this, well, lots and lots of stuff going on in it, and uh, we've maybe built on a few things. We, uh, we're not going to stop building. We have three space stations just churning out stuff. Greasy Joes, everything everywhere all at once, and wharf of money printing stuff. In fact, this place has huge amounts of construction stuff it just queued up. There's a whole bunch of habitats down there as well. But that's not what we're here to do. What we're here to do is make absolutely oodles and oodles and oodles of money using the dumbest trick possible. Right. What we have here is a shipyard that can make stuff. And uh, what I have here is a wharf trader. Uh, well, you know, it's just a trade ship. It's uh, actually a miner. We're going to tell this miner to upgrade itself at our shipyards, which only cost parts. We don't have to pay anything because it's our shipyard. And we're going to get it to take on 100 advanced satellites. So, please give us 100 advanced satellites. And in fact, I'm going to do that with two more as well. Done. And you can see the little spanner symbol. That means it's changing equipment right now and can't do anything. But we don't care. It's fine. We'll get around to it in a second. What we're going to do is tell all three of them to head over to here to our local Taladi Wharf. And what we can tell them to do is we would like you to upgrade there and just sell off those satellites at 64,500 a pop. So that's 6.45 million. Uh, thank you. In fact, what are we at? We are at 126 million right now. And we're going to sell off all three of those. And then we'll just speed up time a bit while they all go about their job. All right, first one is docking right now. We're at 126 million and... Come on. Come on. 132 million. Hey, 145. Oh my sweet God in heaven. 146 million. Beautiful. Now, one thing you'll notice, these ships are automatically returning back to Wharf of Money Printing. After we told them to sell off, we didn't actually have to tell them to come back. We also set up a behavior here. There's several default behaviors they can have, and we set them to dock and wait. And then we set their home base, or their destination that you should go back to dock and wait at, as Wharf of Money Printing. So now the moment they're finished everything, they come right back to Wharf of Money Printing, and we can repeat this again, until we run out of the two components necessary to make advanced satellites. And the two components necessary are... Advanced Electronics and Scanning Arrays. It takes five scanning arrays and five advanced electronics to make one satellite. Which means we have enough of these to make about 500 satellites, which is, well, got five more runs at six million a run. Yes, so I'm just going to go make a quick 30 million. Give me one moment there. One thing I'd like to point out before we do these last two trades, it's pretty hard to crater the money you make here. Uh, we've been, we've got it down to 61,000 a satellite just because we have done maybe a little bit too much trading with this guy. But if you were willing to go a little bit further afield, I mean, you'll never really get it below about, I think you can go below 45,000 pretty much anywhere. That is like the baseline, but you shouldn't be able to go above 60,000 or below 60,000 in my opinion. We could say upgrade and repair at a Vigor shipyard. No, they actually have good prices. Let's try somewhere else. Maybe somewhere a little bit potentially more expensive. Found you. There we go. This place is buying them for 74,000 a pop. 
That means 7.4 million. And the great thing about this is it's not technically cargo. Your satellites are not cargo, so no one's going to bother them. They're not going to get raided by pirates. No one's going to ask them to drop their cargo. They're just going to go do it. They, I don't even think the, the bugs will attack them because they're not actually mining. They are actually miners, though, so hmm, I'm not too sure about that. But for now, this is just the ships I'm using because it turns out miners are a lot faster than traders and cheaper. So you can buy the miners for less money and they'll do the job because you don't actually worry about cargo capacity. All you're worrying about is the satellite capacity or their, their ability to hold those support things. And for an, a medium-sized ship, it's always 100, regardless of size, or regardless of everything else. So that works. Now, downsides to this, it's manual. We have to go in and we have to do each one of these. Uh, we're limited by advanced electronics and scanning arrays. That's pretty much where our bottleneck is. Right now, when it comes down to that, we are producing 2,640 e advanced electronics an hour. And for scanning arrays, we're producing 2,640 scanning arrays an hour. It's almost like I planned that out. And yes, yes, I did, because I'm, uh, I spent way too long trying to build this factory right. But anyway, at 2,640, and it takes five of each, that would be 528 satellites an hour just from these two, uh, which if we sold them all, each satellite for 60,000 to pop, just 60,000, no more, no less, we're going to about 31 million an hour. And we've got to manually sell all of those, which is an annoyance, but the income is kind of huge for the amount of time and effort you put in. Oh, God damn it! one second. Anyway, to fuel this money income, we've queued up a whole bunch more. We've, right now, we've got 10 scanning arrays going on and about eight of these advanced electronics. We're going up to about 18 more scanning arrays and a bunch more electronics. I don't know, I'll have to figure out the precise numbers later on. I basically just copied and bunched, pasted a bunch of sequences just to extend this on. And once this section and this section is complete, we should be just burning money. And what we're going to burn the money on? Blueprints. Lots and lots of blueprints. We want to be able to start producing some of the nicer ships. I would like to start just producing all of our own cargo ships. And we wouldn't be producing low-end cargo ships. We're going to be cranking them out with Mark III engines and all that stuff because we will be able to afford it because we will be making them ourselves. That is the dream. And once we have those, well, that will make expansion and then lots more ships a thing. But first, I am going to go do some shopping and I'm going to put this on high-speed while all of these stations build, because there's so much to build. This literally takes hours. I mean, it's crazy how much time you have to put into these. I would definitely break up the factories into smaller chunks next time. But while I'm away, plenty of stuff is going to get built. There is so much construction queued up here. I wish I could actually get a number on how much resources are going to be consumed by all of this production expansion. This is our shipyard area here, and these are all the components being produced here, like missile components, uh, turrets... What is it? Shield components, antimatter converters. This factory, combined with our other ones, basically makes the whole thing self-sufficient. We will be able to produce all our own components, and then everything we produce will just be pure profit, or just pure destruction for killing stuff. All right, we'll be we'll, we'll be back in one moment. Well, I was off, well, doing nothing. The uh, the AI decided to attack the void. Uh, there's a couple of K destroyers here rampaging through this sector, so we've had to show up and take care of the problem. Oh, I probably should keep an eye on where I'm going. Yeah, I sort of ran into a few asteroids in the way here. We're a little bit delayed, but we've gotten here in the end, and we've got to take out two K-Destroyers pretty quickly, or the Argons are going to have a bad day. That's just about right. We want to end up about 10 kilometers away from this, so two kilometers of a, of a failure, not too bad. Actually, pause this for one second. I would like to knock out one of those engines. We don't actually need to. We're fast enough that we could get away with it, but there. All-round engine. Yes. So, get a little bit closer. And perfect. If we could just take down that engine before it turns, it would slow it down even further and make it even more useless. We can reverse faster than this can think. Well, we can't quite reverse as fast as this thing can gain on us, but we're pretty close to it. Shields down to 5%, hulls down to 66 Come on, kill the engine. And there goes their engine. Perfect. That means their speed movement speed now is 66 meters per second. We can reverse faster than they can attack, which means they're dead as a dodo. Uh, it didn't matter. We didn't really need to take out the engine anyway, but it's always nice to do something a little bit tactical. 
Once this one's down, we'll have to turn Explosion around and nab the other one. Uh, where did we leave the other one? I think it's behind us here somewhere. Yes, yes, well, that's more scrap for the pile. Toasters. Oh, this is actually an I destroyer, Thanks not a K. How much did you get paid for that? We got paid about 300 grand for wiping that last thing out. I mean, not gonna kick it out of bed for eating biscuits. That's a decent amount of change. Ooh, there's an eye destroyer and there's another K behind it. I do like our Odysseus though. Our Odysseus fully tricked out with all these mods is pretty much, it just destroys stuff and we can back away faster than they can catch up with us. I know there's a, oh, there's a, a split destroyer that's quite good as well and everyone likes the, um, the Raptor. Wait, no, not the Raptor. Yeah, never mind. But that one has a much shorter weapons range. I kind of preferred the, uh, this one because I'm, I feel like we're less likely to do something stupid that gets us killed. Okay. Oh. Stop I. being so close together. That is, um, okay. unfortunate. The fact that they're so close together makes me nervous. Let's be real careful about this. I. I'm beginning to think they have noticed us. Uh, you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I do not like the idea of taking on two I. of them at the same okay. time. I think we'll maybe... Well, we can reverse at 105. We are speed. I. You can't move very fast. I'm thinking we flank, take out the K first, and then deal with the I. We'll use the sp our speed to our advantage. Flanking maneuver completed. Uh, let's close in on this sucker from the rear. And that thing has a shield generator right under there in its very, very delicate nethers. If we could perhaps target that. There we go. Zen extra large shield generator for the Branch 9 destroyer. We're going to aim for that. If we could destroy that. I was asked to drop my cargo. Its shields would immediately crumble as far as I'm aware. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, it seems that we have to chew through their entire shields to get that. We might have wanted to pick a special weapon if we wanted to kill that thing quickly. Never mind. Looks like we're just going to have to kill it the old-fashioned way. By the old-fashioned way, I mean keep blasting away until there's nothing left but chunks. How close are you to that other ship? Because if you could explode Explosion and do some imminent. damage to the other one, that would be nice. Oh, I don't think you're close enough. Oh, that's a pity. Oh well, looks like we'll just have to blast this thing to chunks as well. Though on this one I think we definitely do want to take out an engine. All round engine acquired. Open fire. Actually wait, we might be out of range. In range. Thanks for your help. I think their engine is about to explode. There we go. I don't think you're going to be moving too fast, buddy. Let's get a little bit closer so our plasma turret's going to open up. I think this is our first eye that we didn't spin like a top and kill while well, using a little bit of glitching, exploiting type stuff. The absolutely glacially slow pace of these things moving makes them killing them uh, kind of nice. I think even if this thing did turn around to try and take a beat on us, we can just reverse faster than it can close in on us and uh, just pick it away from a distance. Odysseus build. Super strong. All right, let's fast forward this a bit. Explosion imminent. You should make a lovely pretty pop when you go up. And... Boom. Excellent. Now I should probably go around and find out all your, where all your little kids are. I went to go hunt down all the little fighter babies that thing had spawned, but uh, I found another K destroyer. So, like, a teenager, I suppose, in this metaphor circumstances. Yeah, so we're gonna have to wipe out the teenager first, then we can wipe out the last of the babies. But dear lord, immediate backup. that's two K destroyers and an I destroyer in this location, or three K destroyers and one I destroyer. That is kind of mental. I don't think I've seen a an attack that big before. 
Okay, we're almost there. Let's hit the brakes at about 15 kilometers out. Yep, that actually worked out perfectly. Let's get in nice and close. That's plenty close. Open fire. No, 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 no. No. I'm trying to find the actual engines. I wish there was a way to target the engines more efficiently because this is just... You know what? Requesting immediate backup. There's no point doing anything tactical with this thing. We're just going to pump it full of hot plasma until there's nothing left but a smoking heap in the sky. Plastic explosion imminent. Alright, so that's four of them down. Oof. Uh, I feel like I should go up and collect all the boxes that got dropped, but I'm not sure it's worth the time and effort of collecting them all. It's just at this point we have so much money that it just feels kind of pointless going around collecting these boxes considering the time and effort it takes and the fact that we can just pump millions out of our current infrastructure. I'm still gonna do it, it's just I feel like it's a waste of time. The void has been cleared of all of that nasty xenon interference. The, the machines are gone. However, I wanted to make sure that did not reoccur. This is Frontier's Edge, and this is where the Xenon were coming from. So, we decided to plug this area right here, and we've put down the Frontier Edge... Actually, that's a defense platform, it should be called a factory, but whatever. This is our defense platform. Standard issue, current design is uh, the sort of T-Pose one. Uh, that one's ready, and it should be pointing directly at the gate. And uh, let's see, show environment. Yes, it is showing the environment. X ah, there it goes. So, it points directly at the gate. It's going to be a nice, uh, decent sized one. However, a bit of a problem. Uh, well, we'd hit the point where uh, one of the platforms had finished, and fighters still kept coming through, and there's like a little bit of splash damage off those things, so I decided to leave the sector. In out of sector combat, you don't get those friendly fire incidents for some reason. The moment you leave, it has to render these things much more simply, so your guns don't do friendly fire damage. It's really helpful. Anyway. We have a wee bit of a problem. To escape the sector, I just decided to run out the front door so that we could see what was on the other side and maybe do a bit of scouting. Now, where is that lead? Ah, over here. Yeah, so we got over to this section and we parked up just to, well, just to protect this thing while it's still coming online. Unfortunately, it seems there's an attack fleet headed our way. Uh, there is two K-Destroyers and one of those giant eye destroyers headed our way. Now, we have just killed... 1i and 3k's, so this doesn't seem that bad. However, we we don't have any real running room. We've got to kill these as quick as we can, otherwise they're going to destroy that platform. And I have just spent the last several hours building that platform and getting the resources there. No! No, 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 no. So I say we push forward, uh, we greet them in the field, and try and uh, shred them before they get close to the gate. If they get close to the gate and get through, fine. Then we'll let the defensive platform help us out. Ooh, actually. I don't think about it. How, how much of the defensive platform is online? If enough of that's online, it might be fun to see how much damage it could do to them. Uh, you have 16 flak dirt, 32 large plasma. You know what? I want to see what 32 large plasma can do to them. Let's, let's go back through the gate, uh, let them follow us, and we can just see how well this defensive structure does against such a large invasion. And I want to watch it. I want to watch them all get burned alive. Ooh, buddy. No. No, no, that was a bad place to, to hang around. You shouldn't, you shouldn't stand near a defense platform like that. There's just way, way, way too much firepower. Oof. I'm not even sure what we're shooting at, but I'm sure something back there is dying. Where's the big stuff, though? I was kind of expecting the big stuff to show up at some point, and it hasn't hit us yet. All I'm seeing is some fighters. Where is the rest of them? Seriously? Get, you guys get your button gear, would you? We're getting bored out here waiting for you guys to show up and die. Finally! I was wondering when one of these guys was going to show up. Let's see what our starbase can do to one of these. Okay. Yeah, this is a fully operational starbase. They're, well, not quite fully operational, but mostly operational. And oh my god, your shields are 
Explosion <laughs> imminent. Well, yeah, I think we have sufficient firepower of sufficient magnitude to ensure that this place shall not be bothered by any of our enemies. Well then, uh, we have also assigned that a ship. There's like a whole fleet here that won't move forward. I'm waiting for them to come through. But in the meantime, uh, fighters show up occasionally and get obliterated. This defense platform is almost complete. What are we looking like? We have 40 flak turrets out of 48 and 79 large plasma out of 96. 20 medium shield generators, 20 large shield generators. It's, it's, all, it's not quite fully operational, but I do believe, judging by that rather large wreck in front of us, that it's operational enough to take care of any problems we might encounter. Oh, and that little Minotaur, thing over there? Sentinel. That Minotaur's job is to go around and pick up all the crates that get left around. Occasionally we'll teleport back and uh, collect it. God, these T-bases are just... They're just awesome. T-defensive platform, no more problems anymore. You just leave this area and you don't have to worry about coming back to fix something later on. Ooh! They can dodge, though. you got to give it to them. Well, at least for a brief period of time. And There's only so much flak you can dodge before eventually you run out of luck. All right, let's get out of here. Ilias, e. Oh, there it is. That's the one that's got the last piece of Claytronics that ship that uh, the station needs to finish off. All right, then. Time to go secure some more resources. Actually, no. Time to go secure some more blueprints. And we're going to use those blueprints to start making money off the Taladi for a change. See, right now, our shipyard, the Wharf of Money Printing, is great for making satellites and things like that and manually building stuff so that we can make lots of cash out of it. In fact, oh, we could totally do another big spend. But no, 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 we don't need to make a whole bunch of satellites right now. What we want to do is take the 247 million we have in the bank and use that to give the Taladi something to buy. Now, currently, the only ships we can build are the Demeter Sentinel, which we're using to make our nice little traders. In fact, we can load these out quite nicely. We can build Mark III combat engines, thrusters. We can basically juice them up with whatever we want because we're building them. I was asked to drop my cargo. You were... Nope. Oh, don't drop your cargo. Anyway, long story short, the Taladi can't system. buy good the stuff void. off us because we don't have any of their blueprints for them to buy. And we want them to start buying our stuff because it makes us lots of money. So instead, we're going to teleport over to their rep. We've got a rep. They've got a rep over here, and we have left a ship here so we can teleport to it. Oh, the fact that they included that teleport tech just makes this so much easier. Hopping over to their rep. The plan is a rather expensive one. We are going to buy all of their small and medium ships. And a lot of them. We want them to start buying them off us. Now, I don't know exactly how much we have to buy or what would be the best, so instead we're just going to get them all. It's, it's the only thing I can think of. Well, we could probably do different ways. Ooh, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Uh, yeah, it's expensive, but we've sort of made a lot of money, so we're willing to spend this kind of cash. Good profit. Buying every single weapon they have available. Oh, well, all the small and medium weapons they have available. Ah, oh, that hurt. Still... 41 million, Good and profit a lot you. of those are repeats, so we won't have to buy them off the other crowds. The other crowds already, well, the other crowds also stock those exact same weapons. Oh, okay, turrets. Oh my god, and shields and everything. Uh, give me a minute, let's see how much this is going to set us all back. The only thing we left out were the large and the extra large engines and thrusters. We don't want any of those because, well, we don't have the extra large Good shipyards just yet. to you. Ooh. Okay then, now that should mean that the Taladi are able to buy from us. Which we'll find out, I suppose, pretty quick if, you know, the money inside the station starts going up a lot. In fact, let's have a quick check to see what the station account is at. 157 million. See, let's jump to the two. 169 million. Okay, we're going to leave it there. We're not going to touch this. And let's give it a bit of time and see if there's any more money in it when we come back. Ooh, that looks good. That's a Thai fighter osprey. What the hell is all of this stuff? Construction prices. I don't think that makes any difference, but um, they're buying stuff from us. The maintenance base, nothing. No one cares. But that's a lot of ships. That's an awful, awful lot of ships. What's the money in here at? 170 million. Let's give that another few minutes. 171? Okay, let's give that another few seconds, I should have said. Apologies. Ooh. So, 260 million. That's, um, 
that seems decent. That seems like a decent operating uh, budget increase from the trading. We will we will take the cash. Thank you. Yeah, I think I found my new favorite way of making money, and that is uh, getting the AIs to buy ships from us. Now all we're going to need to do is, well, increase production substantially. Uh, we ran out of hull parts for a while. We, uh, well, don't worry, we got replacements for them. We, we have 30 hull part production things, and even then we sort of ran dry. That might also have been the construction that was going on. We started to run out of ore and silicon. We had to hire a bunch more big miners. Uh, we've got a bunch more big miners that have kicked in, and they should hopefully resolve that problem. Uh, the, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we need so many scanning arrays anymore. I'm thinking I'm not going to be building masses of uh, advanced satellites, but for now they're already built, so I suppose we'll just leave them there. We probably just won't need them. Right now I'm trying to up the population of our main production facility, namely because, well, the more people we have, the more production we get, so we don't actually have to pull in any more resources, we just get a 40% bonus to our productivity. Might actually require us to build even more of those habitats, though. Where is it? Ah, workforce. Yeah, we need 63,000 people, and we can currently only support 40,000 if you're, all of our habitats were full. Oh, and when it comes to filling these things, it turns out just build lots of large habitats. Every large habitat you add increases the amount of people you can grow by every turn. So, just lots and lots and lots of those, and eventually it just starts to grow really quickly, which is where we're gaining, gaining 175 people every, I think it's 15 minutes? Yeah, I think a, a work shift is about 12 or 15 minutes or something like that. Whatever, we're, we're slowly but surely building up the population. As for medical supplies and Nostrop well, we don't build it here anymore. We stopped building it at this location because, well, it took workers to run it and, yeah, it was taking up space. Instead, that was all outsourced to uh, Greasy Joe's over there. So Greasy Joe's is doing all of our food production now. And it's all shipped over here. This, actually, what about, I should cover this. This is everything all, everywhere all at once. This is the factory, the big factory that does most of the production. This is just the mining group. So all of these ships from here to here are the miners assigned to pull in resources for this sector. This down here is the traders. They are what sell, transfer, and do all the stuff required of the traders going around the place. Yeah, uh, these are the people who buy the construction supplies. Honestly, you don't need that many of those. That's just everything everywhere. Then there's our uh, wharf of money printing. This is all of the trade ships attached to it, about 20 of them. Just so that... Well, just so that it all works out. Um, oh, and now that we've got a proper, fully up and run, running place, and we've got all the proper blueprints and stuff knocking around the place, one thing we can do is dumb stuff like this. We can say, get this wharf trader. This is an older one, so we bought this ages ago. It's got a level 1 docking computer. It's got a... We actually give them combat engines mark 2. Makes them more likely to survive. But we can say, I want you to come over here. I would like you to upgrade and repair at our shipyard. Uh, we should already have a loaded for you. We will upgrade you. We will give you Combat Thrusters Mark III, Combat Engines Mark III. We're going to remove your gun. It just gets you in trouble. We want you to run away. And upgraded software for free. Give you some uh, laser turrets also. Boom. Add that on. Oh, actually, before we add that on, I stick an S in here. Uh, S just means this trader has been upgraded. You have to come up with weird ways of keeping track of stuff. I can't just grab all of these and tell them all to upgrade at the same time for some reason. So I have to do each one individually. That's a very slow and tedious process, and you need to make sure to change their names so that you can remember which ones have been upgraded and which ones haven't. It's a... Uh, there is some fun workarounds towards getting this stuff functional. I am super late getting this video out. Reason being is just there's so much to do, so many little things that need tweaking and... Oh. But I think the plan would be to get ourselves the Earl King capital ship next. The Earl King is one we have to kind of find. I think we have to steal it first by boarding at Marines. Then we're going to have to find all the blueprints to actually equip it. And from what I can see from the stats, it looks like an amazing heavy destroyer that should fire... It'll, it'll put our Paranid Odysseus to shame, and we can use that to do some demol demolition. In fact, we're kind of uh, running a little bit short of methane, and uh, from what I can see, I can't get my traders to leave this sector. Everything, every... Like, they won't leave 18 billion. All of my miners just sort of stay in this sector and don't Request leave. Permission to dock. Docking permission granted. I've set them to avoid dangerous places, but I didn't think surrounding areas were too dangerous. As far as I'm aware, all these surrounding local areas are fine. I just don't get why the miners won't leave 18 billion, unless there's enough in there for them to mine. But, uh, who knows. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. Next up, we're going to be building the Earl Cannon. I hope you enjoyed. Good luck. Hey.